What's up everybody, it's Prophet Jason Weathers here. And it's been on my heart to do this video for a long time now. Um, I wanna introduce y'all to some friends of mine. Um, don't be weirded out when I introduce you, okay? Uh, the first friend is here, second one is here, third one is here. These are my chicken pock marks. I was about eight years old when I came down with it. And I became very self-conscious about my appearance after that. And um, when I was in third grade, I actually had a young lady who I was who I was crushing on. Uh, she made fun of me as a result of that in public um, around all of my classmates. And it was devastating. Um, and um, that was just <clears throat> one of the events that sort of made me begin to question my value in the sight of others based on my appearance. And so I also would have people who made fun of me uh, because of my appearance and um, I would find ways to try to cope and compensate and distract from uh, my physical appearance. And then it continued to sort of develop into a thing where it only got worse uh, because um, I ended up getting some more friends Got one there, got that one. I was about nine, 10 years old. Had a curtain rod in between my legs, sitting down, chilling after playing outside <clears throat> during the summertime and uh, I forgot it was there. And so when I leaned forward to get up, it dug into my chin, left a scar there. And uh, I got one right here as well, if you can see it. Uh, got that one when I was in sixth grade, playing for a basketball team and um, uh, there were some tables and tires that had been left in the gym that we borrowed uh, to do practices in. And uh, <clears throat> we were doing a drill and after I shot a layup, I, I watched it go in and tripped over something. To this day, I don't know what it was, whether it was my feet or a tire or something. And uh, I ended up banging my head on the table, splitting it open, having to get 13 stitches. Uh, so that was not so traumatic in the actual event, uh, but the follow-up was in the sense that I ended up uh, getting a bruise there um, on my forehead and I was already self-conscious about my appearance. Um, so <clears throat> you'll notice that, you know, I, uh, I called these, these scars my friends. And that's because whereas I once saw them as enemies, enemies of what I felt like I wanted to get out of life and, um, you know, viewing them in a way where <clears throat> I felt like they were holding me back from being the person that I wanted to be or the person that others wanted me to be, particularly girls. You know, when you're a young boy, uh, you know, you're in junior high, high school, um, you're like, you're, you're, you're basing your value on, on how attractive you are to the opposite sex. And, um, you know, uh, I'm telling you this because Jesus has delivered me. He has set me free and I'm not self-conscious anymore. But I know that there's some people out there who um, you struggle with this and um, whether it's, you know, pimples or uh, bruises or even your skin tone, uh, your body shape, um, men and women, young men and young ladies um, are, are susceptible to this type of <clears throat> um, this type of insecurity. Uh, and we live in a time we live in a time where we're bombarded constantly with images that are airbrushed and photoshopped and uh, we do it to ourselves with apps and it's okay on an artistic level but in many ways uh, this perception of, of reality as being um, uh, you know a person who has flawless skin and, and a flawless body shape all of that stuff is kind of seeped into our souls and we we kind of uh, we kind of feel like we have to always present in that way. And so um, there's a, there's a uh, what do you say? It's almost like a, a danger of it becoming so pervasive in your life to where you forget who you really are and you uh, put all your resources and energy into being somebody that you're just not. And uh, and that can be that can be very devastating and destructive to what God wants to do in your life. So, um, you know, then I got this one right here. Uh, you can't really see it. Um, you'd have to look pretty close. But um, 
when I was uh, heading, heading into my freshman year in high school, I scraped my face on the bottom of a swimming pool. And uh, as, a, as a result, it left this bruise in between my eyes. And I just couldn't deal with it anymore. Um, I, I had dealt with ridicule in the past. I had, uh, I thought I had worked through a lot of my insecurity um, to be able to uh, present in a way where I felt like I could get the attention that I needed or desired. And um, I just couldn't take having another bruise. So I actually snuck into my mother's room and found a shade of makeup uh, in a compact that I felt could cover it up. And so for a whole year, I, I wore makeup and it started out as just being a thing on, on my nose. And then, you know, you find a blemish here and a blemish there. And before you know it, you're covering up half your face, um, trying to make yourself look how you wish you looked. And um, and I did that for a whole year. And I won't get into all of the scares that I had where, where you know, people almost discovered that I was wearing it. And, um, you know, but it was difficult. And you felt like, you know, I felt like I was wearing a mask and I was... Uh, putting on a facade and it it it, it, uh, it got me the attention that I wanted but um, it just I knew something was wrong you know it wasn't my desire to do it um, but I, I just couldn't deal with the pain of uh, feeling like you know my value was diminished because of my appearance um, but uh, going into my sophomore year the Lord set me free from that but it took many years particularly uh, me having to rededicate my life to the Lord and, and, and be filled with his spirit and really be set free from chains uh, of bondage in order for me to be able to uh, look at you through this screen with great confidence that the Lord Jesus is enough for me. Um, not your reaction or your response or your approval of my appearance, but, but Jesus and his love for me um, and his goodness toward me. And I want you to know that the Lord Jesus wants to set you free too if you struggle with insecurities and the thing about the scars these days um, with everybody trying to cover up any blemishes and things like that is that they tell a story. They they help to define who you are. And for me, they define uh, part of Christ's victory in my life. And, um, you know, it adds character uh, to my appearance. And um, it speaks to where God has brought me from and what I've been through. And um, I thank God for him. So that's why I call him my friends. Um, so I thank you for watching this video. Hope you got something good out of it. Look forward to some more great content. And uh, thanks for, um, um, you know, hanging out with me as I introduced you to my scars, my friends. <laughs> God bless y'all. And may the Lord Jesus uh, make his face to smile upon you. And may he do a great work in your life and setting you free, keeping you free and using you to set other people free in Jesus name. And if you don't know him, just ask him to come in and to save you, to be your Lord and Savior, and to use you for his glory. Do it. It'll be the best decision you ever made in your life. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.